G'day, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be running through how to manage family type files in Autodesk Revit um, using Excel to manage comma separated value files. Um, so if everything I said just then made no sense to you, don't worry, um, I'll run through the process. Um, so in summary, we're using Excel to import family types into Revit. Uh, so family type files, for those that aren't aware, are just basically TXT files or text files that can be exported out of Revit and they can be used to house type data um, to be used when you load and reload families. So for example, down here, you can see a column family with its respective type file next to it. Typically, they'll be the same name as the family. Um, they're quite easy to create. So in the family environment, you just go to export family types and it will create a corresponding family type catalog. Um, so there's a few good things about this file. Uh, one of the best ones is that you get to selectively load your types when you open the project. So if there's a corresponding type catalog next to the family, Revit will actually bring up this sort of dialog and let you selectively choose what you want to bring into the project, which is great for such families as steel sections where there can be up to 50 types in the family or more. And as well as that, it also safeguards your type data um, just in case someone saves over a family um, and leaves you with say one type when really you should have 50 to 100. Uh, a lot of companies I know actually lock down their library, but it's also an additional measure against um, BIM managers making mistakes or accidents. Um, so it's, it's a good system to have as well because this data can be re-imported back into the family as well. Um, so today's goal is to actually create a whole set of types in a family, but not in Revit, um, doing it in a much faster way in Excel. And we're gonna be looking at the type catalog itself, which is basically a file that's known as a CSV file or a comma separated value file. In principle, a comma in these files represents a break in data. So a new cell or a new piece of information. So you can see down here, these commas breaking up each respective piece of information. So without further ado, we'll actually do a demonstration of how this works. So I'm just gonna open up a steel section family, just a universal beam. And in this family, uh, there's only currently one type. Um, so let's say I didn't actually have any types in this family. I just built the family for the first time. I'd set up one type that I really liked. It has a lot of fields in it. It has some authoring fields, has a material. It has all the structural dimensions, um, such as B, H, the radius of the root, the flange and the web thickness. And it also has some codes, prefixes, suffixes, subcodes, subcodes, supply groups, etc. lots of information, but we want to have many more types of this family. So a file that I had on record when I actually was setting up this family originally was basically a type catalog file of the steel section from AutoCAD days where that actually had a type table driven into their block families. So it had all these pieces of information which I basically extrapolated into this table so that I could bring it into Revit. Um, this, this field here was interesting to turn into a suffix and a prefix. So if I go, if I just insert two new columns here and I just do a text to columns so if you go data, text to columns, I'll do a delimited separation of the data and I'll separate my data based on UB. Actually, I can only do it on U, but what I can do is I can break it up this way and I could find and replace B in there with nothing. And that's how I got my prefixes and my suffixes out of that, that name, essentially. Um, the reason why we have prefixes and suffixes in this case is because we want to tag them in particular sometimes and we need to separate that data for tagging purposes and also scheduling purposes because we section by, we, we schedule by type of steel section sometimes. Okay, so I've got that data. The next thing we need to do is actually open up our type catalog. So in this family, I'm just gonna go export, family types, and I'll just navigate to where I've put that. And I'll just export this file. So in Excel, we're gonna open that file. So for those that aren't aware, Excel can open nearly any file type that it should logically open. So we're gonna go demo, okay. So if I go down here where it says all Excel files and I go all files instead, um, I can actually open any type of file now. So I can open a TXT file. It's gonna prompt me to break up the data and it's gonna ask me how I wanna break up the data. So I'm gonna go delimited and I'm gonna separate it by comma because this is a comma separated file. And you'll see that this actually logically breaks the file up into cells from this point. So we can finish. And this is basically our type catalog in Excel format. So from here, I've already sort of went ahead a few steps just to save a bit of time. And I've formatted that data I need into the columns as they appear. So I'm just gonna take, sorry, okay there. I'm just gonna take all that data and copy it in um, to the type catalog file. 
So we'll go back to that catalog file. Cool. And what we know is we can just paste that data in. And I've, I've basically rearranged the columns so that they line up to the corresponding parameter. You can increase column widths if you need to read specific parameters and understand what they are. Um, in this case, all we need to do now is we can actually just save. And it will just say, do you want to retain Unicode text format? Because that takes away some of the Excel capabilities. That's fine. We're going to say yes. And we'll just close that. Cool. All right. So we'll just minimize Excel. So what we need to do now is actually open that file in Notepad. And the only difference is that when Excel saves out the file, it turns all the commas into tabs instead. So tab is basically Excel's way of separating data. So what we need to do is select that, control, uh, copy it. Control H for find and replace. We need to search for tab. So we'll paste that tab and we'll put a comma instead. And we'll do a replace all. And what we've done is more or less refederated that data into a comma separated file again. So in Revit, you go to insert import family types we can navigate to that file we can open that file and we have a few options here so we can delete all the types and just make fresh types based on that file we can import all the new types and overwrite the existing types instead or we can keep the existing types and only import the new types typically i'll delete the existing family type and import new and you'll see what that's done is it's brought in all that data from excel that we set up so all those fields have come in cleanly some of these fields were locked down by a formula, so it didn't really matter what the type catalog file says because the formula takes effect over that anyway. Um, but typically I fill out that data in either case. Uh, and you'll see all these types are pre-populated with all the fields that came out of Excel. So it's a really handy technique to um, recover data, but also to quickly set up data in families that have a lot of types, um, such as still sections or door types, uh, elements that are very repetitious. Um, so I hope that that's um, helped uh, give you a new technique to your arsenal today. Um, that, that's pretty much it for the day. It's a really quick one, um, but hopefully you get some time to try it out and get to use it in your day-to-day -day workflows. Um, if there's any questions about the workflow or any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them down below and feel free to follow and subscribe if you're enjoying what you see. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye.